And so the average buyer doesn't have the money for the principal, the interest, the taxes, the insurance, plus a thousand dollar HOA fee. So what this does is it narrows the pool of buyers. It has to be a buyer who doesn't need that much space, a buyer who can afford a thousand dollar HOA fee every month, a buyer who has $75,000 to put down on a down payment. And so for all of these reasons, I'm looking to sell my condo because I don't like some of the changes that have occurred within the condo market. Today's video is about why I want to sell my condo in South Florida. So my name is Tiffany Vendries and I'm a Caribbean American woman living in South Florida and traveling the world. I help women build wealth, travel, and live richer. So if that sounds interesting to you, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Look at these iguanas. Can you see them hiding in plain sight? Green over there. There's another one right there. So as families grow, people generally want to buy a, a place for their growing family, for their kids, for all of the stuff that comes with kids, for all of the, the equipment, the, the stroller, the everything. And they usually want a place with a garage so they can use that as storage. They want a place with driveway so they can park and they don't have to walk too far with the kids. You don't have to do too much of a struggle with the groceries and the kids and the car seat and everything. So places with a garage and with a driveway and with, you know, a lot of space storage, they are in higher demand. So such as a townhouse, or a single family, those are usually higher demand. And what happens is they appreciate faster. So your townhouse and your single family will appreciate faster than your condo in South Florida. So the condos have a lower appreciation rate than the townhouses and the single families, and that's because there's less demand. So my condo has been around the same market price, you know, around the same market price for the last couple of years as where my townhouse has appreciated by you know, tens of thousands of dollars. And so that's one reason why I want to sell my condo. If you're financing a conventional loan, let's say, and you're going to live in the property, you're gonna be an owner occupant, you would need to put down 25% minimum. And if you're not going to live in the property, you're going to be an investor, then you would need to put down 30%. So with other types of properties, like a single family or a, a townhouse, you could put down as low as three and a half percent with an FHA loan. A lot of condos are not on the Fannie Mae FHA approved list. So you would have to put down more money. And condos around here are, you know, about 300 plus. So you would need to put down 25% of 300,000 versus three and a half percent. So the average buyer does not have the minimum requirements for a, purchasing a condo. The average buyer doesn't have $75,000 to put down, plus closing costs, plus the moving expenses. They don't have it. So they will look at other properties and that lowers demand for condos. Another issue with condos is the homeowners or the condos association fees. This can be several hundred, if not a thousand or more dollars a month, $1,300, $1,500 a month. And so the average buyer doesn't have the money for the principal, the interest, the taxes, the insurance, plus a thousand dollar HOA fee. So what this does is it narrows the pool of buyers. It has to be a buyer who doesn't need that much space, a buyer who can afford a thousand dollar HOA fee every month, a buyer who has $75,000 to put down on a down payment. And so there's these restrictions that narrow down the pool and lessens the demand for condos. The other issue is aside from the monthly HOA, or COA, Condo Owner Association. There's also special assessments. A couple of years ago, we had a condo building collapse in Miami. And ever since then, they the laws have changed and they're now mandating that these condo buildings restore the building. So they have to do 
inspections and they have to do whatever restorations or renovations are necessary in order to meet these new codes. And the associations don't have the money to pay for it. The owners are the ones that are gonna pay for the remediation or whatever reconstruction, renovation, whatever has to be done to the building. And that cost can be tens of thousands, even up to, I heard a case where it was over $100,000 per owner. This has nothing to do with the monthly association fee. That fee covers your regular maintenance, your insurance for the common areas, the pool upkeep, maintenance on the lawn. That's just a regular building maintenance. And then in addition to that, they will charge, condos will charge special assessments. And special assessments are for uh, projects. So for example, if they need to restore the concrete, if they need to do something to the roof, if they need to replace the roof, these, or if they have like maybe issues with the pool, but not like regular maintenance issues, not like cleaning, like something needs to be redone, or like a construction issue. They will charge the owners tens of thousands of dollars in order to make these repairs on the building. All those things weren't enough. You also have the current interest rates. So interest rates have gone up. Everybody knows that part but it just factors into a smaller pool of buyers for condos because if the interest rates were lower, maybe they could afford the higher uh, condo association fees. If the rates were lower, maybe they wouldn't be so stressed out about the higher down payment that comes along with purchasing a condo. So for all these reasons, the buyer pool is limited for condos and I am looking to sell my condo because I don't like these changes that have occurred in the condo market. It wasn't always like this. When condos were a lower price point, then it didn't matter that you had to put down 25% because 25% on a hundred grand is 25,000. But now that the price point is so much higher, that 25% hits, it's different. You know, there's a, there's a, maybe someone could afford $25,000 down, but that same, first time homeowner, that first time buyer may not be able to afford 70, 80, you know, $90,000 down on their first purchase. All that being said, Florida is still a great place to invest, a great place to live. Check out this video here on the pros and cons of living in South Florida.